Here's another shot of that bridge now that the clamps are off and have a good look at it. And she's on there. Beautiful. 100% contact. This is my setup that I use for gluing the fingerboard extension. It is a dovetail joint. Uh, I glue the dovetail with hide glue so that at some time in the distant future, if it needs to be taken off, it can be steamed off easily. The fingerboard extension, I use just regular carpenter's glue for that. And I clean it up and wipe it up just like I did in that last video with the bridge with the tongue depressor shaped and uh, a damp cloth and clean it right up. Super clean. He, went, he chose to, to use a classical guitar rosette in this uh, a jumbo guitar so it decreased the size of the sound so what he did was he cut a port in the side of the guitar to make up for the loss of diameter with a smawler sound hole he's got a beautiful bear claw top on the I slot see. the bridge after it's glued to the guitar this way we guarantee perfect intonation we get it right every side of the fingerboard I got that little clip on there just to get the tip of the end of the fingerboard down tight so this is the pine clamping call that I made up for gluing that fingerboard extension down. It gives me nice even pressure across the whole area of that fingerboard extension. So I've relieved, obviously relieved the frets and I put a little bit of a curvature in it so that it gives me good solid clamping pressure, one clamp. I get these multi-use router platforms uh, made up for my level two students that have to route out pickup cavities and electronics cavities, etc., etc. Uh, it's just kind of a multi-use thing, but the main reason I designed the thing in the first place was to uh, deal with slotting bridges precisely, safely, and accurately. So I'm set up now getting ready to route the saddle slot in Darcy's guitar, and that's how I set up. So I've got those three-footed clamps so a three-legged stool doesn't wobble, right? We've got three points of contact. Underneath this point is a piece of a hockey puck. Nice. So one more use for hockey pucks. I'll show you when I take it all apart. So we've done the math on the scale length for this bridge and that line at the front of the bridge represents the theoretical distance of the scale length and then the slanted line of course is the actual compensated distance so that represents the center of the cut and that gives you enough real estate in the saddle to be able to intonate the guitar for whatever strings whatever gauge whatever tuning this CNC centering plate is a perfect match to the Bosch Colt base plate so I drop that into place and that gives me my start point and my stop point. And for that start and stop point, I just have my spring clamps that act as a positive stop. So now the router cutter is confined. I know tons of people out there use Dremel tools for, uh, for this job, for slotting bridges. And that's fine. Uh, lots of people are doing excellent work with Dremel tools. I prefer to use a Bosch Colt router because a Dremel tool is essentially one sixteenth of a horsepower. The Bosch Colt is one horsepower. So I, the Bosch Colt allows me to make a perfect cut with one pass. I've been doing this for years. Anyways, I do make up these uh, platforms. Uh, so like the Tech Deck workstation, these things are made in, in limited quantities. There's another small run of the new Tech Deck workstations due in a few more weeks. We're just doing a small run of a hundred. Most of them are already spoken for. But there'll still be a few more up for grabs, probably end of April or so. Yeah, so contact me if, if you're interested in uh, snapping up one of the newer units. I'll do a full video on the two new units once they're available. Okay, the cut is done. We'll now disassemble. And that is essentially what we got. Two hockey pucks on either side. You have the top, the kerfing, and the side underneath the pressure points. So there's no danger of crushing or cracking anything. Obviously these are pretty heavy duty clamps, so you've got to be reasonable about it. You don't reef on them. The engineered rubber for hockey pucks gives you 100% traction and no compression. People use hockey pucks to mount like a 350 big block engine. You can correct me on that, uh, Jody, if you wish. But that's what I've heard. People actually use these things for mounting uh, big block engines. So I have a 
bunch of uh, rosewood backs and sides and tops and fingerboards and this is how I edge glue the top and back plates. So I essentially sandwich the, uh, the two pieces between two layers of plate glass. I put a couple of flip lock clamps down to just kind of hold the thing flat as I edge glue it. Now this one is done. I do put a layer of like saran wrap on both sides. You don't want to glue the tops to the glass because they will glue to the glass. But let me just take this apart and you can kind of see what we got here. That's our rosa back jointed thickness kind of ready to go. I'm just about to sort through these sides to kind of pick out a good color match for that back. So these sides are all thickness and book matched. Looking for a good color match for that uh, rosewood back I just jointed. So yeah, we're going to go with that set. So we've got our sides thickness. Uh, they're like I said, they're 85 thou. We're going to lay those out. I don't get a chance to build as much as I used to be able to build uh, when I was teaching the acoustic guitar building courses. Of course, there were all kinds of guitars on the go then. Uh, but between the uh, you know, my regular shop activity, the repairs and setups, and this next run of, of uh, Tech Deck workstations, the new ones, is taking up quite a bit of my time as well. Just to keep my sanity, we're going to build a, a nice rosewood dreadnought acoustic guitar for Graham. This is our uh, jointed uh, bear claw spruce top. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, this is the top we'll be using on that dreadnought guitar for Graham. So I'm going to walk you through it as best I can, take some video when I can. I can't spend all my time on video production, but uh, yeah, we'll keep posting videos and uh, keep you in the loop. This is Jack's Custom Shop Strat that had the sort of razor sharp uh, frets along the edge of the fingerboard. We uh, edge dressed that, buffed it out. Uh, it also needed a fret dress along the length. There were a few different spots where it was kind of zitting out. Uh, so that's set up now, and we did go with a hardtail on this. It's just a press fit ash wedge block that's put in the back. I have that self adjusting radius gauge as well. This has the roller nut, so I didn't put a compensated nut on this one. It could be easily done if Jack decides to go that route, but uh, we're just I just left that roller nut in there for now. So Gary hopped this up with some uh, noiseless pickups and I think he put the uh, looks like stainless steel saddles on there as well. Anyway he's put a lot of, a lot of effort into this guitar. It's basically a kit guitar and he also put these uh, sort of step down machine heads as well. Uh, now that he's got a compensated nut and this thing is set up within an inch of its life he can pretty well throw the tuner out the window. This thing is really behaving itself. And here's our open string and first fret notes. I want to make sure I'm not blocking the camera here. So now that Darcy's guitar is all wrapped up, I can start bending the sides for this dreadnought for Graham. Pretty pumped about this. Looking forward to it. I will take as much video footage as I can as I move along and, uh, and post it on the String Tech Workstations YouTube channel for everybody. Cheers.